suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law, chapter 30A, paragraph 18, in the governor's March 15, 2020 order, imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place, members of the public who wish to watch and listen to the meeting may do so in the following manner. WCTV, Channel 9, Comcast Xfinity, Channel 37, Verizon Fios, and live stream WCTV.org. This meeting of the Wilmington Planning Board is being conducted via remote participation. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. Members of the public who would like to listen to this meeting while in progress may also do so via telephone by dialing one 646 Five five eight eight six five six, and enter meeting eight two seven zero three one 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 zero four eight. Then press pound, and press pound again at the next voice prompt. Members of the public attending this meeting virtually will be allowed to make comments if they wish to do so during the portion of the hearing designated for public comment. By following the steps previously noted, then press star nine on their telephone keypad. This will notify the meeting host that the caller wishes to speak. All callers using this feature will be placed in queue in the order they had entered the prompt. In the event that Despite our best efforts, we are not able to provide for real-time access. We will post a record of this meeting on the town website as soon as we are able. So we have a 730 continued public hearing, conservation subdivision design, special permit 19-01 for 79 Nichols Street. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I could just interrupt for one second and just ask you if you could do a roll call for attendance. Oh, okay. Angela. Here. Rondi. Present. Sean. Here, Mr. Chairman. Terry. Here. Okay, everybody's present. Thank you. So is uh, the attorney, Jill, is she up? I am, I am here, thank you. Okay. Um, so good evening, Jill Mann here on behalf of Golden Realty Trust, the owner of the property located at 79 Nichols Street. Um, I know this has been a long protracted process and um, we, we just received comments on our submittal um, today and it was just too late at 4.30 and I had site walks, so I wasn't really even able to review them except for a very, very, very brief review. Um, but I did ask Ms. Gingrich, you know, would you, would you, what would you like for me to do tonight? And she just asked to give a brief overview because it's been a while. So with the indulgence of the board, I'm going to give a very brief interview. I mean, okay. very brief review. So this okay. project is a five unit conservation subdivision for which we have um, submitted to the board and through many iterations um, produced a yield plan that met with mm -hmm. the criteria of the engineering department and planning um, for passing the test of what would potentially be the yield of a conventional plan, and that would be five lots. In addition to that, during the process, we did seek approval and obtain approval from the sewer commission to be able to install sewer, whether this project is developed as a conventional project or a CSD. Um, notwithstanding that the proponent most certainly wants to do a CSD and continues to um, offer that to this board. Um, as, as Ms. Gingrich just put on the board, um, there is, it's a five unit conservation subdivision. So this will be a condominium. The street would be really a driveway that will provide access to the five individual buildings. Um, the balance of the property beyond that development area will be um, open space. And it will also include areas where there will be a walking path along the canal. And those are shown on this plan as well. Um, we did go through the entire, um, if you will, bylaw and provided for support under each of the categories. I did note in the response that the board wanted us to update the narrative. I mean, I can most certainly do that, but there really aren't any changes from the narrative I had submitted. So for example, it asked that we update the open space narrative. Um, it's the exact same thing. The waivers are the exact same waivers. There's two technical waivers, one for the um, open space component, 
So as this board knows, you're supposed to only have the amount of open space in the, op I mean, I apologize, the amount of wetland in the open space that you have on the entire project. Um, we're asking for a technical waiver because we would give all of the open space in order to meet the strict requirement of the bylaw, we would actually have to give the town less open space. So we're seeking a technical waiver, not because we can't meet the actual letter of that requirement, but because we wanted to convey more of the property and have it subject to the um, a restriction. In addition to that, we are seeking one other waiver. So under a CSD plan, you're supposed to have more of a setback than what you're required to have under the um, normal subdivision or bylaw requirements. So with the bylaw, you're required to have a 20 foot setback. Under the CSD, there's a requirement for 30 foot. So we were seeking a waiver from that requirement from the right of way to be able to have the home where it's located because all of the other homes in the area are closer than the 30 foot setback as well. Um, so those are the two technical waivers. We can make the home the 30 feet away and shift, but we just like the way this laid out better. So those are the two technical waivers. Um, as I said, we really do need to go through the comments from planning and the comments um, that were generated by the engineering department and have not had the opportunity to do that. We will be able to provide a full report to the board at the next meeting. Um, one thing I will just apprise the board of is that we did get um, a response from Kleinfelder. I think that's, is that right, Ms. Gingrich? I think that's the, the water a consultant, I'm pretty sure. Kleinfelder is the water consultant, yeah. yes. So we did submit to them um, a request and did receive from them confirmation via a report uh, that the project has sufficient, the town has sufficient capacity to provide water to this particular area. We did um, contact Arcadis and actually got finally a proposal from them the other day. Um, we wouldn't go forward with that proposal to pay for all of the engineering work because it's about $6,000 for them to review all the engineering plans. And before we can fully submit, we need to know exactly what we're going to do so that they can review one set of plans instead of multiple plans. But that has been secured and we will sign the proposal and deliver that to Ms. Gingrich for the file. Um, in addition, you can see that what we're proposing for amenities for the town is shown on the plan is a walking path that will lead from the cul-de-sac of this particular CSD and into the back to the open space area. The other amenity, just to refresh the board's recollection, is that we are going to provide um, a walking path along the area that is the Middlesex Canal. So we're preserving that and we will be providing a split rail fence to delineate the area of the property so that people know where to walk. And we'll provide signage too. We had met or really communicated with Ms. Bigwood about what you know she envisioned for this area and we are going to post signs and we will undertake to do that. Um, and I think that was a very quick summary. I, if the board has other questions, please let me know. But I think probably that's all the board really might want to hear tonight. Um, Val, mm -hmm. I, I didn't see the comments from Paul, but uh, from you, did, did uh, we all set with the yield plan? Yeah, so we're all last, um... Last we saw the project, we sort of wrapped up the yield plan process. Um, and now we're sort of moving on to the concept plan, the proposal that they'd like to build. Um, but we didn't have any additional comments on the yield plan. Okay. Does the board have any questions? And we'll send those comment letters to the board um, tomorrow. Okay. We put them in the Dropbox. Okay. They weren't there early, I guess I, I just missed it. So, okay. Um, so we'll continue to October 6th. Is that the right day? Just confirm that. October 6th is correct. Same time. Same time. Hey, before we do that, can I just ask one question? Yep. So on... Um, and I, I know that not everyone's seen this because it just came out today. Um, number eight on the uh, engineering memo talks about the um, uh, the set uh, the vegetated buffer thirty foot from the property boundary. 
what is maybe I'm just not seeing it on the plan. Or maybe I'm not looking at the right plan. What what is build? How far is building one from the property? Like what's that? It, yeah. It's supposed to be thirty foot, but it's not. What is it? You know, build. it's sure it's twenty one feet. Okay, so the same as so here. Yeah, the 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 is it referencing referencing Nickel Street or the property? Nickel Street. Oh, I see. Okay, all right. Yeah, from the side property line, it's almost thirty two feet, um, but from Nichols, the twenty one and a half. Okay, and the the your reasoning behind that is just the area. Is That's what kind of yeah. that. exactly. And we comply with the bylaw, and we can make it work if the board chooses not to issue the waiver. Um, but we are seeking the waiver. We think it just works out better for the property. Okay. And actually, the side of the driveway would be closer than the twenty-one and a half feet. Um, so it would, you know, it's supposed to be a thirty-foot uh, vegetated undisturbed buffer. Um, so I think it would be the me the measurement from the driveway to the to the street. Um, Usually that doesn't include driveways because you drive into them and they're excluded. I'll look, I didn't know if it included it because you know, usually you can have a driveway. You just can't have the structure. So I'll have to check. I don't, I don't know the answer to that because it's pretty common because when you drive into it, if I had an access off of Nickel street, my driveway would be there. So that's why I didn't think it, it that mattered, but I'll, I'll take a peek. I'll look at it and make sure. So I'm going to write that down. And then that, that vegetated buffer is, is supposed to be along the public way, um, along any wetlands. So this wetland back here, that 30 foot buffer would need to be back here. Yep. Um, and then along all the property lines. Yeah, that, that all makes sense. Just, you know, the one along the public way, I don't, I don't quite get, I think that's new to me. So. I, I, you know, what I will do those. I'll have them draw the 30 feet because I think we, originally had maintained the 30 feet, Ms. Gingrich. And I, I, I can tell, I mean, obviously I can see the 25, but I can't tell if that's 30, but I'll make sure that that back building four and building five meet that. Yeah. And it's, like I said, it's less of a setback and more of just, it's supposed to be an undisturbed, you know, a no disturbed zone. Um, so, you know, as far as vegetation and, and all of it. So, you wouldn't have lawn space in that. You wouldn't have lawn space within that 30 feet either. So we're talking about five single family houses, right? Yes. 3,000 square foot houses? What are we talking? Oh, no. They're, they're, they're much smaller. They're, All right. Good. That's yeah. what I want to Much, hear. much smaller. Okay. And Mr. Chairman, we do have someone um, on the line who has their hand up, maybe wanting to make a comment. Yeah, go ahead. All right. Let me unmute the caller. All right, caller, are you there? Uh, yes, I'm here. Is that Hello, Betty? Hello, Mr. Chairman. No, this is um, Charlie Dagley from 12 Jakes Lane. Uh, I just had a very quick question um, for Ms. Mann. Um, earlier in her description, she was describing the walkway, the amenity that is leading out to a, uh, an open space. I was just wondering if, if she wouldn't mind um, elaborating, that, uh, elaborating on that a little bit. Is that going to be um, a cleared area or is that going to be a wooded walkway or what is the uh, plan for that? And I'll take my answer off air. Thank you. Hi. M may I? Yeah. Okay. So um, if you can, and I apologize, but you can see the walking path going through. We are intending to clear very small, but it is a wooded path. So, ex for example, if we can avoid cutting down a tree, we'll meander the path around it. And if there's a little bridge to go over um, where the wetland is. Um, a, a small footbridge, and then it just leads to the open space area, but it's intended to be a wooded, um, a wooded path, N no more than that. And then Mr. Chairman, if I could follow up with a question too. Mm -hmm. um, one of our, one of the comments or questions in the comment letter is, 
about that path. Um, I think it's new to the plans. It wasn't on the, the last version. Is that path intended to be um, used by the public or is that kind of used for the condo association? Um, it goes down a bit of a steep slope between the two homes um, and, you know, sort of leads you out into this area. So is it, is it a private path? Is it a public path? Um, just kind of wanted to ask about the, the intent. Yeah, that's more, that's intended to be a private path. The other path along the Middlesex Canal is intended to be the public path. Okay. Anything else? All right. So we'll uh, continue the public hearing to October 6th at 7.30. I'll take a motion. So moved, Terry. Second, Randy. Angela? Yes. Sean? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Terry? Yes. Randy? Yes. Chairman votes yes. So, okay, so we're on October 6th at 7.30. Thank See you, you very then. much for your time. Appreciate it. Good night. You're Thank welcome. you. Good night. So we had a 7.40. I take it this is a continuance for this? Uh, no, they're, they're here tonight. Um, they have not requested to continue. Um, oh, we did, I got confused then. We did get um, we did get revised materials um, this evening, so um, we didn't get a chance to look at those yet. But um, they did get us some some revisions. I believe the engineer and the project manager are are on the line, as well as the representative from Monogram. So you just got things tonight? Yeah, we got. Well, we. We gave them our review letters and then uh, we got things back again. Um, so a second set of plans since so your last meeting. When did your review letter go? Um, let me look. Last week, I think. September 3rd. Is that what it is? All right, well, let, while you're looking for that, let me... So we have a continued public hearing site plan review 20 02 and stormwater management permit 20 02 for 330 Balladville Street. We also have site plan review 20 06 and stormwater management permit 20 06 296 Balladville Street. These both go together, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the, when they were here last, didn't wasn't one of their complaints that we gave them comments late and we didn't they didn't have a chance to respond yeah so we well we gave them comments planning gave them comments um, a week ago and then engineering had comments to them on the third to last thursday and then they get so they answered those and gave you a new submittal today yeah yep um this afternoon so we haven't gotten a chance to look through those um, in detail. Um, quite yet, so. Okay, let them, uh, why don't you put them through and let them speak. Sure. I believe, um, one of them might be frozen, but, um, Ed and John and Ron are here for this item. Ed, John, who wants to talk? I'd be glad to talk. Um, so basically this is Ed O'Connor and we had been working with Valerie to try to get the comments back from planning to get the process going. And we got those prior to um, you know the the response back from Paul. So um, you know they're they're you know more in 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 our view they're more kind of housekeeping to make the plans clearer 
and there were some, you know, numbers of parking spaces and some, you know, I would call, you know, detail work that, that, that John addressed. And then, you know, we kept asking, you know, repeatedly for what the status of, of the engineering one was. And we got those either late Thursday or Friday. And John addressed them, you know, over the holiday weekend, you know, the client, you know, accelerated John's schedule to try to get him answers back. And, and he was able to meld the two, you know, the two requests together because we knew they would need to be reviewed concurrently. And it didn't seem like um, a lot of the stuff from engineering was of a huge nature. Again, there was a, a manhole frame that had to be, you know, um, adjusted. There were a few things of that nature, but um, it seemed that you know, to be candid, it took quite a bit of time to get back after we've been, you know, trying to be proactive and, and, and help along and address these issues. So it's a little bit frustrating at this point um, to be, you know, back here almost in a similar spot as we were. All right. Uh, Val, do you have the comments? Why don't you put the comments up so I we can see it? Can you share the screen? Sure. Hold on one second. You want engineering comments? Yeah, whatever, whatever the latest comments were. Okay. Just give me one second. All right. It seems to be an issue here with some miscommunication here or something's going on here. This is a couple of meetings in a row now where either something wasn't submitted completely and uh, we didn't get them back comments fast enough. Something's going on here, and this is twice. Yeah, let me, could I clarify that a little bit? Sure. Um, so typically, um, we only, um, typically engineering issues comments um, prior to the meeting. Yeah. Um, so, and in these cases, that's that's what was done. The The comments were issued um, prior to the meeting, um, yes, it didn't give them enough time to respond to those comments, um, but that's, I guess, typical for, for what happens um, with every project. Those engineering um, comments come in, um, you know, days before the meeting, so there's not time for them to, to give us another set of revisions, um, typically. So it's, it's, not, it's not something out of the ordinary, I guess. All right. Uh, let's go through this for a minute here. Let me see here. Apple can't agree to condition now. The first comment shouldn't hold anything up, in my opinion. So the Auckland uh, shall plan a great inlet capacity calculation to confirm the use of a single gray or revise a plan to a double gray catch basin. So do I read that? Does that mean he didn't do a calculation based on the great inlet capacity? Which would seem pretty standard for a stormwater permit. Yeah, I think the issue was that the catchment area was very large for a single a single catch basin. But again, a double catch basin, if it has to be a double, then that's not that big a deal. Uh, scroll down a little, all right. So has most of his comments to do with the stormwater management plan? Yes. Yep. If I may, Mr. Chairman, uh, this is John Judd speaking. If I could just uh, briefly address these, uh, that might be helpful. Okay. Uh, so there are essentially um, these comments uh, three through six that basically are paperwork that uh, Paul, uh, Mr. Lunny, uh, requested, which we've included in a revised uh, report, which had very minor changes, uh, which are incorporated in the, um, the stormwater uh, calculations in the model. So uh, very minor changes, nothing really changed on the plan, except uh, uh, Mr. Alani wanted a, a double catch base, a double rim catch base, and he felt like the, uh, that would be needed. It's, it's a fairly... Um, 
uh, it's not a big deal to put the extra rim in. We've already revised the plan. So that's the only change uh, on the plans that were requested by Mr. Lenny. Uh, and the rest of this has been uh, addressed in the, the report that was uh, emailed over um, today. Uh, we did get, I received personally his comments on Friday. So we, as uh, Ed indicated, we went ahead and, and made those, uh, those changes. And again, they were fairly minor on the engineering end. Uh, there's another letter um, from planning, which, you know, again, as, as um, Ed had pointed out, these are largely, um, you know, additional comments that have to do with uh, some uh, um, uh, appearance of the plan, so to speak, but really nothing, any of any substance. And we can go through those if you'd like. There's a, uh, we wrote a letter, cover letter with a one sheet cover letter addressing all items, both uh, from planning and engineering. And, uh, you know, again, nothing, nothing uh, that is uh, uh, too significant. You can meet all the stormwater regulations comments yes. here? Yes, they, they've already been addressed. Mr. Chairman, well, could, could I ask a question? Sure. Um, so John, um, you said that the plans didn't change other than the double catch basin. Um, From engineering, correct. Okay, so the size of the basin itself didn't didn't change? No, the size didn't change. The only thing that changed, uh, Valerie, was the elevation of the outlet. Uh, okay. You know, Paul had wanted a, a one inch uh, recharge for a one inch storm. So what we did is the, the basin's large enough, it's just we raised the outlet by three inches, the outlet weir. So Val, what were your comments? Um, on our, our comments were mostly administrative changes to the plans. The, the main thing was the stormwater system. Um, we did include the comments in, the, in a comment letter so that they could make those changes now and it wouldn't hold up any endorsement. Um, but the content really was that we needed to see change was the stormwater system. And um, I, I know from Paul, like you said, John, that either the basin needed to get bigger or the outlet structure would need to change. Um, and that was something that he was um, looking for changes in. So we, he, could, he can coordinate that with Paul. That's not enough to hold this up. Let's move this along. So I don't, I don't foresee that being an issue. I don't know about everybody else, but we're square on the parking and everything. Yeah, they're asking for a parking special permit to use the, um, so the reason why there's two parcels right. involved is because they're using the, the abutting parcel for parking. So for zoning, they have more than what they need, uh, but because it's on um, a parcel that they're leasing, they're asking for the special permit to kind of combine those things. Okay, so there's nothing physically holding this up other than the calcs on the stormwater. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. And if if the um, if the basin or the outlet needs to shift at all, um, that could be conditioned. I guess um, what we what we don't have is draft decisions. Um, we don't. We hadn't reviewed the the plans that came in today to create the draft. Oh, we could have draft decisions for the next meeting, though, right? Yeah, for sure. We can close the public hearing in the meantime. Yeah, I don't see why you couldn't. That way, the clock will tick while we go. We do the decision. Sure. Does anybody have a problem with that? Nope. Let me, let me try that again. Terry, do you have a problem with that? No, I do not, Mr. Chairman. Sean, do you have a problem with that? No, Mr. Chairman. Rondi, do you have a problem with that? No, sir. And Angela, do you have a problem with that? No. Okay. You okay with that, Ed? Yes, that'd be fine. I appreciate it because, you know, we, we've no all- No lectures, Ed. That's okay. <laughs> Keep no, it moving. No. Got it. All right. So, um, I'll take a motion. We close the public hearing on site plan review for 20-02 stormwater management permit 20-02 for 330 Ballardville Street. 
and also for 20 06 and stormwater management permit 20 06 for 296 Valleyvale Street, and with the condition with uh, the understanding that uh, all the comments will will be uh, addressed. Take a motion. So moved, Randy. Second, Terry. Okay, how do you feel, Angela? Yes. John? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Terry? Yes. Rondi? Yes. Chairman votes yes. Okay. Let's make sure all this gets squared away. John, make sure you take care of Paul. Good. Did I lose you, Val? Oh, no, I'm here. I'm good. All right. So we're good? Yeah, we're good. All right. Let's move on. All right. I think next is Board of Appeals. I know. This is... Uh... Carol, uh, there wasn't a letter in there. Someone asking for an extension. Did I misread oh, no. something? Yeah, for for three thirty, Balladville. So they need an extension for the. To complete. But we just completed it, so they still need it. Yeah. For the site plan, for the site plan piece, they do. They, they, I already stamped it in with the clerk, so it's just a formality that you guys extend it. So I give them an action deadline to what? Uh -huh. I don't have it in front of me, so. The end of October. I had it in front of me. Uh -huh. October 30th. For both 330 and for 296 or just 330? Um, for both of them for the site plan piece. So we'll take a motion to extend the action deadline to... October 31st, 2020 for October 30th. Maybe. October 30th. All right. October 30th, 2020 for site plan review for 20-20-02 for 330 Ballerville Street and 20-06 for 296 Ballerville Street. And the storm and the stormwater piece. And the stormwater piece for yeah. both. Yes. Give me a motion. So moved, Rondi. Second, Terry. Angela. Yes. Terry. Yes. Sean. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Rondi. Yes, sir. Yes, and I vote yes too. Okay. Good. I got confused. That was my fault. Thank you, Cheryl. No, I should have reminded you. I just buried it. No, no, I misread it. I thought the whole thing was getting extended. I I misunderstood. So who's up? Board of Sarah Appeals. Sarah up with the Board of Appeals? Sierra's not with us tonight, so I'm taking over. Oh, okay. Filling in. Um, Jeez, what, a, what an easy boss. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, first one is Hathaway, uh, 35 Hathaway Road, where they'd like to do an addition, a 28 by 22 addition. Um, let me show you the elevation. That's well, not so great. Sideways. Yeah, no. Well, anyway, I can show you. <laughs> um, so this is a um, this is a request for a special permit for being over fifteen percent in the groundwater protection district. So they're proposing the addition here. Um, they're taking up their old driveway, which was over here, and they're putting in a new driveway in front of the addition. Um, they're going to do a, a stone trench along the driveway behind the addition. And that um, infiltration trench makes up for their, um, their percentage over 15%. So they're infiltrating what they need to infiltrate um, to make up for the increase in impervious. There's a lot going on on here, but um, I can... Scroll down to, sorry, it's jumping around. Um, so these are the lists of the existing, the proposed, and then um, the infiltration that's proposed with the infiltration trenches. 
did check in with Paul to see if they're the amount of infiltration they're doing is appropriate, and he said it was. Okay. Anybody have any questions? Nope. You okay with this, Val? Yeah. Yeah, typically we're okay with the over 15 if they're doing, you know, the right amount of infiltration. The whole goal is infiltration, so. the next one everybody's okay with that one yes yep. okay yeah. all right the next one is 22 lincoln <laughs> my old house oh my god they're a huge addition on <laughs> <laughs> this is your old house <laughs> yeah before i moved to glenwood i lived on Lane street uh, at 22 they're four foot yard <laughs> there's a huge rock wall out in front in the roadway so Rand, all the Rand, houses in the neighborhood have all been creased and in Rondi's old house. Um, Ooh, yeah. Addition, 24 by 24 addition. And the existing home is, the front setback is non-conforming. Mm. So they're proposing to, you know, step it back slightly here, um, but kind of continue with the, the house line to the side. So the only setback they wouldn't meet would be the front setback, um, but they're, not as close as the existing house. Um, I think this is the one where there's, yeah, there it is. So that's what what's proposed. Um, it's a kind of a single story. Here's the existing on the bottom versus the proposed with the 24 by 24 addition. When I lived there, it was okay. They put a whole second story on it. Somebody. What, what zoning are we in? This R is R ten. R ten, yes. So the front setback is thirty, um, but they're using they've calculated the average setback um, using the the two homes on on each, one on each side. So that would be they would have to have a, a twenty five foot setback, uh, but here they're proposing the twelve point nine and the eighteen point one to continue um, the home sort of along the front face of it. Like I said, there's a huge rock retaining wall, at least five feet per, um, in, in this right of way, I guess. And there, um, I don't think take them out. Uh, let me pull up, um, I have, a, I pulled up Google Maps just to, to take a look. So I have that up on my screen. Let me, um, so that, they can see the wall. So this is the front. There's a trailer in the way here on Google Maps, but um, the house, um, this is where the existing kind of screened in porch is, where the addition would come out, the 24 by 24 addition. So. Right this, there, you can see in the rock wall, there used to be an entrance. Oh, right here? They closed it off. That's a nice so, rock wall. Yeah. I mean. Hi, yeah. So the addition's kind of. Taking so away the breezeway, right? So the setback is bigger because it's the. I was really stunned when I got the property map when we put this up, and realized we were like in the wrong way, practically at the corner of the house. Yeah. So, Mike, this would come down, and that addition would come out this way. Yeah. So that makes the most sense. So mm -hmm. that's why it's not in the back, I guess. Yeah, and it looks like Lincoln is not as wide as its right of way. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. That that house of the left there, the two story monster, used to be a one story cottage. All right, we don't need a history lesson. So the whole thing changed a lot. <laughs> so what do you think, Sean? Why can't it go in the back? Septics in the back. Oh, I didn't see that. I put it in. <laughs> uh, what do you think, Terry? You know, I think it's I think it's fine. I mean, they're, they're less of an issue, and it's not even full height, so I'm okay with it. Yeah, it looks like it'll blend in okay. It is hard being consistent all the time about this increase of the nonconformity, though. I have to admit that. 
I, I feel like we pretty on the record. I feel like we pretty consistently said that um, that when you're not making it worse from the perspective of of your minimum kind of getting worse, that we're yeah. okay with it. I mean, I I kind of feel like I'm okay with that. Yeah, and they're not okay going. They're not going crazy over on um, you know. Right. Right. So I think it works. My only thing I would recommend that is if the way that's drawn, right, they're taking away the breezeway and looks like they're taking part of the deck. If they want a deck, then they ought to make it all part of this plan. You know, that way they're not having to come back for another, you know, variance on uh, if they need one or whatever. You know what I mean? Whatever they're doing, they ought to do it now. That's my only point. Agreed. So you okay, Val? I'm okay, yeah. All right, what else you got? Okay, 883 Main Street. Um, this one is extending a non-conforming structure uh, with a dormer. So I'm going to pull this one up. Um, no changes to um, the ground plane. Um, it would be a second-story dormer. Let's see. So let me flip this around here. So 883 Main Street. Oh, what? Okay. Where is that? Is that is that are the we, one with is it a wall in front of this one? Are we um, still feeling new house? Let me um let me pull it up on Street View. Oh, that's one of those, uh, it's got the zoning line right through it. All right, so I don't know if this looks right, but. So this is what comes up for 883, and I believe it's this one behind this evergreen right here. Uh. Um, so what I think what they're showing is a dormer up here. Let mm -hmm. me show you. Let me show you the elevations. Um, stop that share. This is like okay. There we go. Reshare this one. Bear with me. Okay. So the existing dwelling, and then they're proposing the second floor dormer on that um, that left side, and the elevations, um, which I can flip, show the proposed on top and the existing um, below with this um, dormer coming off the side. Oh, so they're just adding the dormer up above, that's it? That's it. And so they're increasing so the non-conformity because they're what, the side setback? Because they're going up. Yeah, so um, this is the side view. So they get this space up here. Um, back to the plot plan. Um, they only have 8.8 .8 feet on that side. Um, where this, I believe not, this is they're not extending team. out though, right? They'll they're not. The, they're just they're just going up. Everything else is the same. Everything else is the same. They're just going up with that dormer. They're so not that, going up above beyond their peak or anything. They're not going to be towering over the house next to them. Right. Oh. They're not going. Over Everything's the, peak. the same. Mm -hmm. I don't have a problem with it. What do you think, Randy? I think it's all right. The armor itself is a little flat. I mean, you're probably going to roll or uh, memory roof on it. What are they doing? Adding a, a couple of bedrooms up there? It's like yes. they have the kitchen stairs. I'm a little confused with the plan. Hey, the only thing I would recommend to the ZBA is that they ask them if they can mirror the whole attic level. And then they, and then they go the other way from the nearest house. But 
I don't care. That, that I don't care that they go that they just go up and don't make the footprint any bigger. I don't, I don't think. Yeah, I don't. But it looks like there's an opportunity to encroach less on the neighbors, I guess. Like going the other side? If you went the other way, the, the house on that side, I think it's further away. Yeah, it is. It some, yeah, they some, have like, they're coming up to the second level. They have like a story area about making two rooms in a bathroom, basically. They yeah, that's, that's all I'm thinking is that we might just suggest that they look at mirroring that um, left to right. And, that's, and then they, then it's like the easy yes for me. So yeah. advising the ZBA that they could consider the dormer on the, the other side of the home to infringe less on the, the um, non-conforming setback. Yeah, I mean, there's trees between them and the neighbor on that side, so no, n neither of the neighbors would even notice they made a change if they put it on the on the right side of the house instead of the left. Mm -hmm. Now, is that a is that what you guys would recommend, or that they consider it? That's what they should consider, I guess. There might yeah, be a reason why they can't. I don't know if everything lines up on the other side. Uh, they'd be a kind of a, not even above kitchen. They'd be above the dining room, whereas this one looks above the existing bathroom for plumbing. Yeah, they probably want to stack that bathroom a little bit, right? Yeah, we got a kitchen on the other side, so they still got plumbing. It's not like they got to worry about that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. There is a big window with a dormer which on on dining room side, which to leave in contact, but they ought to be able to deal with that. To make yeah, I mean, they, they might have a reason. The ZBA should just ask them. Dormer. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I'm saying the ZBA should consider asking the question. Right. We otherwise, you know, if, otherwise I'm, I'm fine with it. Yeah, we don't have a problem with it based on the zoning, I guess, is what we're saying. It would be nice if it was on the other side, maybe less intrusive to the neighborhood, to your budding neighbors. Okay, got it. To the, to the current and future budding neighbors, use those words. <laughs> the front, you know, person who lives there now might not care, but the next person might, so... Okay. Hey, an, old business, an old business, I, I see you don't have anything, but I want to go back to something. On this conservation subdivision, right, That on Nickel Street, so in essence, are we holding them, I, I, are we holding them to a certain zoning, like 20,000, 10,000 square feet? Usually we kind of hold to like a consistent with the neighborhood, right, like a 20,000 square foot lot. We're not doing that here. Well, so this one's a little bit different and it's because it's, it's not really a subdivision. It's a, it's a single lot where they're um, doing condominiums. So there won't be lot lines between those homes. Oh, well, they're, they're condominiums in what way though? It's supposed to be each one's going to be its own building, right? A single family house. Its own building, but it'll be a condo within an, in an so association. So it'll have a covenant of a condo, right? Is that what we're saying? Yeah, so right. it'll be, even though it's a single family home, it won't have its own lot and it won't have, oh, it'll be, okay. it'll be just a condo, um, which our, our conservation subdivision regs aren't, written geared that way, but they specifically allow this type of situation. So um, it's a little odd to make it, you know, fit the, the regs, but um, but it is allowed. But Mike's right. They did a uh, yield plan based on what the zone must have been. They did. And that, yeah, R20. So they did the yield plan on the R20. Right. So um, that's what I was – very good, Ron. Did you explain that much better than me? That's what I was trying to get at, I guess. So I guess what I was trying to say is, like, I want to see – so when if you talk to them, I'd like to make sure we have the, the – will we have the R20 spacing between the houses? Yeah. 
uh, condos, whatever we're calling them. Okay. I, I meant to ask that. I, I didn't quite understand. That's why I wanted to talk to you first. So, like, you know, when they were saying they were only going to be whatever it was, 21 feet off the street, whatever it was, you know, if they push it back to get the 30 that they needed, you know, does that crowd them into the next house? I mean, they, as we already know, we know this squeezing in as much as they can in there. So I'd still like to maintain whatever the zoning is between the houses. Or condos, whatever. We'll so call for them. R twenty, is it twenty five feet? Side setback is twenty feet. Yeah. Um, so it'd be forty between house technically. Don't we have well, it technically? Well, there's no lot line, so. Yeah, um, but that's really what we want to see, though, isn't it? An imaginary lot line, so you'd be forty feet of the next house, not twenty five. So. I don't think they're going to have forty feet between, and uh, from that. Plant. No. No, and in and in a conservation subdivision, you typically allow them to do half of what's required. All so, right, so they need to have at least twenty. So right, if you do ten and ten, that's twenty. Yep. I think we're going to get that already, Mike. I think it's our, that's already drawn. Up. Okay. Um, but but please review those um, comment letters. Um, there's quite a list of comments, and some of them are really things that you guys should. Um, um, should talk about as a board. Okay. But we got over the yield plan, right? I mean, that was the key. We did. I mean, that was the biggest hang up. Yep, we did. Yeah, they were trying to get six or seven. Okay. Okay. What else we got? We have a request to endorse the site plan for 362 Middlesex Ave. Um, the, uh, the detox facility, uh, they had to revise the plans, um, to move one of the snow storage areas from the front entrance to the back of the site. They did that. Um, they had to compile a, um, a, a full stormwater report, um, for Paul and they did that. Um, so they met all of the, the requirements for endorsement, um, of the plan. And so if you want to vote on that, we'll, Get those out, get that out to you for signature. Is litigation all squared away? Or? Um, so this uh, is for the um, this is for the um, reasonable accommodation, um, which had no litigation associated with it. Okay. So and, what do you what do you want to do tonight? You want to vote to endorse the plans? You are happy with what's there? Paul's happy. What's there? We are. We're happy. Cheryl's happy. What's there? Get signatures in the right spot, so you, we all got to come in and sign. Yeah, we can either bring them to you, or you can come to us. Cheryl will coordinate with you. So we still haven't squared away the electronic signature or whatever. We haven't, and um, doesn't look like we're going to. Or what's up? I, I've given up. I, I, it's. I don't. Hmm. What's the hang up? The our, state. <laughs> our attorneys um, sent. They have a recording firm that, that does the recording and they sent the signatures. They had me send them to them and we haven't heard anything back from them. I mean, I do electronic signatures for millions of dollars once a month on contracts. I mean, to pay contractors, right? I mean. I'll check in again on that. For municipalities, I mean, it's kind of accepted, but I understand. Yeah. I don't, well, it's not a problem for me. I'll swing by. So, I'll take a motion to endorse the site plan for 362 Middlesex Ave. So moved, Ron. Second, Terry. Angela. Yes. John. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Terry. Yes. Rondi. Yes. I vote yes. Thank you. So what are you doing? Are you going to send us an email to us when you're ready? Uh, Cheryl will send me a text um, and I'll come by. You, if you want to, if you want to come by, you can come by tomorrow. Okay. We need to elect Mike, off signing of for all of them. Uh, well, let's hold off on that for a minute. So 
is town hall open or what what's the situation we got going on we still town hall is closed to uh closed for the public um we're there and um we're doing yeah. window service <laughs> Or so uh, if you have business in town hall, what do you do? You got to call ahead to make sure you can come in, make an appointment. What's up? Knock on the window. You can call <laughs> ahead and tell us that you're coming to the window, or you can just knock on our window. Um, you can use the drop box at the front of town hall. Um, some folks are mailing things in. Um, lots of different ways we can meet you in the parking lot. Um, but we're we're still getting our our um, we're still getting everything we need and. Um, Working like Dairy Queen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, last time you came in and I yeah, the front costume from you. Yeah, no, that's long. okay. I don't but, mind that part of it. Uh, uh, why, why don't you um, give me a little time and let me book the conference room? Every, everybody just email me the times you can come and I'll book it. <laughs> you, okay. tell me, you tell me when you got it and I'll come in. How's that? Okay. We're working from home, so it's pretty easy to come over. So, okay, yeah, me it would be some Friday. Okay, can you can you uh, Val? Can you give us an update on uh, whatever happened at town meeting? Are we are we going to build a high school, a new school? Are we going to build a new town hall? What's going on with all that? So anything new? Uh, not quite yet. Um, first, we'll we'll do the so they you guys voted on the feasibility study for the um, senior center and the town town hall school admin building. So, um, as far as I know, those haven't um, those haven't been those haven't gone out yet. I don't think um, for bids, but the feasibility will be um, over the next year, and then. Um, reporting back on what's found and um, what kind of costs we're looking at and what locations, um, what locations they're playing lottery. You have to buy a lot of ticket every week. <laughs> and what's going on at the uh, Woburn Lowell Street intersection? Are you doing anything there? Um, we are waiting to hear from MassDOT about our 25% public hearing but the design itself is getting closer to 100%. Um, and we're programmed for, uh, I believe it's FY24, but our hope is that in the next round um, this winter of scheduling for the state projects, that um, not to, to hope something bad for another town, but often other projects you know, fall behind Whereas this one, you know, is kind of jumping ahead and could take a spot of something that's not ready. So we're hoping to um, get it in before um, 24. Actually, we're hoping to get it in before 23. So um, we'll see. It's, you know, we don't know for sure yet, but the design has been progressing. We're just waiting for the design public hearing to happen, which I believe is more of a, just a presentation online rather than an interactive uh, meeting, uh, but we haven't gotten a date for that. Okay. Anybody have any questions for Val? You just all want to get off this meeting, is that what you're telling me? All right, yes. so who wants to be chairman? <laughs> Terry, I think you're uh, next in line. To nominate Chairman Sorrentino for another oh. I don't know. I, I think uh, Rondi and I are getting ready to leave. I think uh, someone new should be chairman. Wow. Chairperson. Probably should have thought of that before uh, breaking it out in the meeting then, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, how often do we vote on this? Once, Once a year. A year. Well, We're a couple months late. Yes, I guess I can. Thank you for pointing that out, Randy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Usually we only we usually we have the vote in what April? Uh, right June. after town meeting. May yeah. or so. So yeah. you know, to, tonight you would only be in the position until next May or so. Yeah. So when Randy and I's uh, appointment runs out, we're gonna leave. You know, right? You realize that, right? I understand. Okay. 
You might miss us, though. Mm, maybe not. <laughs> maybe. Uh, Mike all right. and I are going close to 20 years to us. He and I so. start right around the same time. All right, well, I'll do chair for another year, I guess. Who's going to be the clerk? Sean, you going to stay? Who, me? Oh, it's Sean, I don't know. Sean, where'd you go? I'm here. I'll be the clerk. <laughs> got it. All right. He's got it pretty good as clerk as uh, Cheryl told him in. Because why? Clear to write <laughs> so next year, someone's got to be ready. <laughs> right. Yeah, Sean feels about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, Angela becomes the clerk since <laughs> she has the least seniority. So. <laughs> So what else we got going on? Looks like that's, that's it. it. So so what's going on here? Is uh, Paul Paul running behind? Uh, are we having an issue getting things out of the office? Are things coming in too late? Um, I think it's. I think that it's the typical timing. I think it's just um, the process wasn't as understood as some of our other applicants. Um, I think the. Um, expectations. I'm sorry. We always got his memos the day before or the day of the meeting, and it's purposely so that they don't give you a revised plan that you wouldn't have time to review. Yeah. Second time in a month, a month, two a month. So maybe we need to express better that we'll, we don't do that Look, because it looks like we're, it makes us look like, you know, we're coming out with this stuff late. We shouldn't do that. We should give it when we, you know, earlier and just tell them not to submit another plans or don't accept them. That's all. And then when we have the meeting, they can go over the comments. Yes, we will address this. This is how, and then we'll know. That wouldn't have worked for this applicant. Yeah, this this was a little different. Um, I, let's just put it that way. This was just a little different. Well, yeah, I, um, I mean, I, I get that vibe. I understand it was a builder, and he seemed to think that he didn't need to do anything. So I understand that part of it. But it just seemed like uh, it's went a little longer than it needed to, I guess. All right. Anybody got anything else? Sure. Carol, let me know. I'll sign too. Okay. I think that's it. All right. We'll do adjourn. Okay. Take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Third. All right. Sounds good. Yes, I, I, uh. I, 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 all right. All right. See you all next month.